Feelings that cannot be described, but are known to everyone who has experienced them. Allah is certainly perfect in every way. A remarkable yearning is evoked by sights of Allah's sacred house. Allah, the most exalted, said, and you are to complete Hajj and Umrah for Allah. Before performing Umrah, it is encouraged to perform Ghusl and cleanse oneself by removing underarm hair, removing pubic hair, cutting one's nails, and applying fragrance to one's body, but not one's ihram garments. With whiteness like that of a sinless record, male Umrah pilgrims wear an izar, garment for the upper body, and a rideh, garment for the lower body. As for female Umrah pilgrims, they are to wear attire that is appropriate for Allah's sanctified house, which keeps them covered and not exposed. This journey of splendor begins from the Mikat. On the way to Mecca, every Umrah pilgrim passes a Mikat point along their route of travel. The Mikat points with respect to place are Thul Hulayfa, Abiyar Ali for the people of Al Madina. Al Jufa, Rabi for the people of Asham. Karnul Manazil Asailul Kabir for the people of Najd. Yalamlam Asadiya for the people of Yemen. Vatu Erk for the people of Iraq. These Mikat points are for their residents, as well as all others who come to them from elsewhere. Residents of Mecca assume Iran from any boundary of Mecca's inviolable precincts. Part of the Sunnah is that if traveling by land, one should pass through the applicable Mikat point. There one should intend to assume the state of Ihram for Umrah, and he should say, La Baik Allahumma Umraten, O Allah, I obediently respond to your call to perform Umrah. Additionally, if one fears being unable to reach Mecca, it is permissible to add, if something prevents me from going further, then I will exit the state of Ihram where you stop me. If passing a Mikat point by air or sea, it is obligatory for one to intend assuming the state of Ihram in line with the Mikat point and it is not permissible to pass the Mikat without intending to assume the state of Ihram. Upon assuming Ihram, an Umrah pilgrim must avoid particular acts that are prohibited while in that state. 1. Shortening or shaving hair from the head or any other part of the body. 2. Clipping nails. 3. Applying fragrance to one's body or clothing. 4. Men wearing garments specifically tailored to fit the entire body or any portion of it. 5. Men covering their heads with something in direct contact. 6. Intercourse or its precursors. 7. Killing land-dwelling game animals. 8. Women wearing gloves or a covering affixed to the face that leaves an opening for just the eyes. Nine carrying out marriage contracts or proposals. With feelings of reverence and love for Allah, Umrah pilgrims enter Allah's sacred house. One is to enter with the right foot first and supplicate. O Allah, grant commendation and protection to the Messenger of Allah. I seek refuge with Allah, the Most Magnificent, with His noble face and with his eternal dominance against Shaitan the outcast. O oh Allah, I implore you to open for me the gates to your mercy. Upon seeing the Kaaba, one stops saying the Talbiyah, and one then proceeds to the corner of the Kaaba in which the black stone is situated to begin Tawaf from that point. The sunnah for men is to wear the upper garment wrapped from beneath the right armpit, leaving the right shoulder exposed, while both ends of the garment cover the left shoulder.
One then begins to waft in line with the black stone corner, gesturing towards it with the hand and Allahu saying, Akbar. Allahu Akbar, Allah is the greatest. It is part of the sunnah to touch or kiss the black stone so long as doing that does not involve harming anyone. If unable, one may touch it with a stick or something similar and then kiss that item. If one is unable to touch or kiss the black stone, but he gestures towards it, he is not to kiss what he gestured towards it with. For tawaf to be valid, one must be clean of both major and lesser forms of hadath, intangible impurity. This is because tawaf is similar to prayer, though it is permissible to speak during tawaf. One begins to off from the black stone and makes seven complete circuits until he eventually ends at the black stone as well. While performing to off, a Muslim is to remain occupied with mentioning Allah and supplicating him and is to avoid arguments, disputes or joking around. The setting is one of much importance in which misdeeds are forgiven people attain salvation from the hellfire and their righteous deeds are raised to Allah. It is part of the sunnah for men to walk at a brisk pace with short steps during the first three circuits of tawaf as best able and doing so is not prescribed for women. When passing the Yemeni corner of the Kaaba, one is to touch it with the right hand if able without kissing it. If difficult to touch the Yemeni corner, one should refrain from touching it and proceed in performing tawaf without gesturing towards it or saying Allahu Akbar. It is part of the sunnah to say the following while between the Yemeni corner and the black stone corner. Our Lord, grant us good in this world, grant us good in the hereafter and protect us from the torment of the hellfire. Upon completing the seventh circuit of Tawaf, men are to cover their exposed shoulder and all Umrah pilgrims, men and women, are to perform two units of prayer behind the Makam Ibrahim, if able. Otherwise, the two units can be performed in any part of the mosque. After Suratul Fatiha, in the first unit, one is to read Kul Ya Ayyuhal Kafirun, Suratul Kafirun. And in the second unit, Kul Huwallahu Ahad Suratul Ikhlas. Umrah pilgrims then proceed to the area for performing say. It is encouraged to drink some Zamzam water while making one's way there. Then one ascends Asafar Hill while saying, We begin with what Allah began with and while reading the statement of Allah. Indeed, as safa and al marwa are among the defining marks of Allah's religion, which he designated as sites where he is to be worshipped. One then faces the Kaaba direction, praises Allah, declares his perfection, and supplicates him by saying, there is none worthy of worship except Allah alone without any partner. To him alone belong all dominion and praise, and he is able to do all things. There is none worthy of worship except Allah alone. He fulfilled his promise, aided his worshipping servant, and defeated the alliance of enemies by himself. That is to be repeated thrice, and one is to supplicate in between as he would like. One then descends from Asafar and heads towards Al Mawa while mentioning Allah and supplicating Him as best able. It is part of the Sunnah for men only to run in the portion between the two designated green markers. Upon reaching Al Mawa, one supplicates just as was done on Asafar without reading the aforementioned passage of the Quran. That completes one out of seven laps of Sa'i. One then returns to Asafar in the same manner described. Each trip from Asafar to Al Marwa or from Al Marwa to Asafar counts as one lap. 
one continues until reaching Al Marwa at the end of the seventh lap. Men exit the state of Ihram by either shaving or shortening their hair on their heads. Women exit the state of Ihram by cutting the length of about a fingertip from the ends of their hair. After exiting Ihram, the acts that were impermissible while in that state return to being permissible. After shaving or shortening the hair on the head, Umrah is completed. It was not narrated that the Prophet, may Allah grant him commendation and protection, performed two units of prayer after concluding Umrah. Dear Umrah pilgrims, you have come from distant lands and undertaken a tiring journey. Therefore, strive to perform Umrah in compliance with the guidance of the Prophet, may Allah grant him commendation and protection, and devote yourselves to Allah while hoping that he accepts your Umrah. Yeah.